What is going on, guys? Just Brad. I got a movie review for you today. It's one of the worst movies I've seen in a very long time. And if you watch this channel, you know that I'm not one to just call every movie that I see bad. I have the tendency, if anything, to look on the bright side of things. This is not one of those times. It was called The Mother, starring Jennifer Lopez. It was on Netflix. And it is, it is bad, guys. Look, it was directed by Nikki Caro. She did Mulan. Take of that what you will. Uh, it was written by three writers. It was written by Misha Green, Andrea Burloff, and Peter Craig. Now, Misha Green did Lovecraft Country, and she also did Underground, and she was a staff writer on Sons of Anarchy in one of the middle seasons. So, you know, if you're a fan of any of those shows, you might be able to discern what her writing style is. Andrea Burloff did Straight Outta Compton, and that was a good film, but it's the third writer that's perhaps the most confunding of all of these. Peter Craig wrote one of my favorite movies of all time. He, was the, he did the screenplay for The Town, starring Ben Affleck. I love that movie, love everything about it, always have. And let's talk about what he's done in just the last couple of years. Peter Craig did, I'm not kidding, The Batman, Top Gun Maverick, and Bad Boys for Life. Look, <laughs> The Batman, not my favorite movie. A lot of people loved it. It wasn't really for me. I, I know a lot of people enjoyed it. It's, I'm not saying it's a bad movie, but I didn't. I thought it was too long, which is also a complaint I have for this film. But Top Gun Maverick was one of my favorite movies, if not my favorite movie of all of 2022 and one of my favorite movies of all time, given the state of filmmaking now. It's just an uplifting story that I really, really love. And Bad Boys for Life was really good as well. So I don't understand how those movies, all of which, especially Top Gun Maverick, have really, really good characterization, managed to be as cold and lifeless as this movie ended up being. So I will start off with a couple of the positives, and there are a couple. The cinematography on this film is beautiful. It is dark, brooding. It seems to be shot on location in Alaska, and it uses that to full effect. I... Again, I watched this on a smaller television. I don't know if there's some matte painting or some computer-generated imagery that enhances it that might have been more noticeable at the higher resolutions. Certainly, the CGI animals were definitely a little bit noticeable, even on my smaller television. But the cinematography, the wide landscape shots are beautiful and help set the tone for the film. Also, Jennifer Lopez, even though I wasn't a fan of the type of characters they were having her play here, she does stoic very, very well. The problem is, is that every time she's being stoic on screen, because you're not really taken in by the storytelling, it just feels like Ben Affleck just said something really, really annoying and she's making a face after he said something. Doesn't really work. The other thing that I liked about this movie, there's one other thing, one other tiny little thing. There is a scene where a bad guy is running from Jennifer Lopez in a very, very hard to believe action sequence. And <laughs> as if to prove that the bad guy is in fact a bad guy, they have him push over a nun. And I liked that. That was that made me laugh. Reminded me of that meme of Tom Selleck when uh, from Magnum PI when he sees the the nun on the ladder and he goes, "Oh wait, nuns don't work on Sundays." And then he shoots the nun. Love that meme. So the plot of this movie: a lady you don't care about has a daughter you don't care about and has to send the daughter away because bad guys that you don't care about get involved with the mother and then it all comes back on her and they're gonna vaguely go after the daughter or are they going after the mom the plot is almost non-existent in this movie and it really does show you don't care about any of the characters so you have no investment in any of the plot as things going on every bad guy could be another bad guy you don't see them as intimidating you don't find anybody interesting at all and the good guys aren't any better and that's a problem look the writing in this movie is bad. If there's one group in the world who should be worried about artificial intelligence, it should be writers of movies like this. I did my best to give the writing in this movie the benefit of the doubt for the first 20 to 40 minutes. I was like, it's a little clunky, it's a little bland, and it's a little uninspired, but you get what you pay for. It's an action movie on Netflix. But then we got to this period where an aging man, he seemed to be in his 60s or his 70s, with a military background, used the word triggered in a sentence unironically, and they lost me from there. I was like, if no writer in that writer's room, no script supervisor was able to stop and think, I don't know if a man of his age demographic or his background would really use that word in a sentence. If they're not willing to do that, why should I be invested in the film? But look, the soulless B-movie action flick is a big thing right now. Citadel is really, really bad. Netflix is like one for three. I loved Extraction. I tolerated The Gray Man. 
And this, I cannot really stand at all. Citadel might be worse than this insofar as that there's more of it. So I feel even more aggrieved at the fact that you have to watch more than just an hour and 45 minutes. I'm sorry, an hour and 55 minutes, which is another one of the big problems with this movie. It's almost two hours long. This type of action movie has a sweet spot of about an hour and 20 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes tops. You cannot take writing this bland and stretch it out over two hours. It just doesn't work. There's a, a genre that this is called that I, I kid you not, I had never heard of until recently. It's called geezer teasers, in which as far as it was described to me was an older kind of bankable action star is surrounded by a couple of actors you might have heard of and there's tend to be straight to DVD fare and there is a there's a place for that in Hollywood and that's a genre in and of itself the problem is it's a guy genre and doing that with a female lead isn't it's it's not impossible but it's very very hard to do I enjoyed peppermint and what I would say here is that look if you had cast Angelina Jolie for the charisma and the stage presence, or you had cast Gina Carano for the believability factor, I think that could have worked. Jennifer Lopez does the stoicism great. She's got a great look on screen in most of her films. It just doesn't work in this environment. The film is so drab, so boring, so bland. The The best character in the whole movie would have been Omari Hardwick's character the, of the FBI agent, and they get rid of him halfway through. The daughter, the, the actress that plays Jennifer Lopez's daughter, she just doesn't have it. And of course, you never want to criticize child actors too harshly. But the problem here is the writing is bad for everybody. So if not even the adults can pull it off, you really can't expect a child actor with far less experience to be able to pull off that bad writing any better than her more seasoned adult colleagues could. And it just doesn't work in this film. It really did feel like somebody went to chat GBT and said, I want you to make a story like Taken, but in the vein of Netflix B movie action films like Extraction or The Gray Man. Here's the problem. Jennifer Lopez is not believable in action scenes. It almost feels as if they cut around her inability to effectively put her weapons together because of the way it's cut down for time. In a movie that's overblown and bloated, it's like they cut around setting up the weapons to make it more believable, feel like Jennifer Lopez actually did that scene. And then, of course, when you see the action scenes where she's running around, she's chasing people, the cuts show right at the headline. They're shot from behind. In a way that extraction through excellent cinematography and the believability of Chris Hemsworth pulls it all together, this movie is sorely lacking in that. The Gray Man had similar problems in that the main character was emotionally distant and hard to empathize with, and none of the characters around him had did any better. Even Chris Evans' kind of over-the-top Ace Ventura-ish bad guy just seemed like a bit of a distraction from a film that felt cold, hollow, and distant, and that's what this movie is on steroids cold, hollow, and distant. For a movie like this to really succeed with a female action protagonist looking to protect her daughter, it had to bank on the mother-daughter relationship drawing you in and being something you wanted to see succeed. This movie just doesn't do it. Jennifer Lopez's character remains distant almost the entire time. The daughter never really finds a way, I believe the character's name is Lucy, never really finds a way to endear herself to the audience in any way, shape, or form. All of the storytelling and script writing is a jumbled mess. There's very little in the way of meaningful story that keeps you connected when the characters fail to do so. In this, it seems like Either the story had to be really, really good so that you'd forgive the bad characterization, or the characterization had to be really, really good so that you would forgive the bland, boring script. It failed on both fronts, and that's why I think a movie like this will never really succeed outside of these kind of straight-to-DVD-like films that are going out on Netflix and Amazon Prime, stuff like this. Like I said, Citadel... Uh, Extraction being the one good one, all of these movies, The Gray Man, they're just kind of a pandemic, if you will. That's the real pandemic in Hollywood right now. And I'm just kind of yearning 
for a film like this that really nails good characters and good storytelling. It can be done, but I really do believe that writers like this, if, if these are the type of scripts that they're going to turn in, then they better hope they get everything they want out of that writer's strike because they could very easily be replaced by far, far cheaper means in the future. So if you want to know another example of how this movie fails, and this is almost kind of the nail in the coffin for it, the music. They use a bunch of really, really recognizable songs that you've seen in tons of network television shows and movies, and they don't do them as well as those television shows did a decade ago. They use, uh, what was it, Massive Attack, uh, I believe Angel by Massive Attack, better used by uh, Person of Interest in the pilot episode. They used Kate Bush, Woman's Work, which I kid you not, was better used by an episode of CSI Miami in one of the middle seasons. If you can't outdo the emotional connection from a CSI Miami montage scene, you have failed to connect with your viewers. So guys, I cannot give this movie more of a down vote. Do not go check it out. Instead of doing that, go rewatch Extraction with Chris Hemsworth, which was a fantastically good B movie. That's got a sequel coming out. Go watch that instead and watch the sequel when it comes out. Skip the mother. I'll be back with another review for you soon. Take it easy, guys. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.